everybody, and welcome to the show. Bass and Bonsai, browsing the internet, looking for a new bait casting reel. Is this going to be it? Possibility. I'm on eBay, and I went to Roger Sporting Goods, held some of those reels. Uh, I basically go up there every so often to kind of get a fix for something new, see what they, because Rogers is good about having new stuff, you know, coming in regularly. I've talked about in other live streams about how Bass Pro Shops, to, in my opinion, especially once the whole COVID thing, what they had available for you to go look at uh, as far as bait casting reels has been horrendous, right, over the years. I mean, they've got some stuff, but you want like top of the line, top tier stuff, you definitely can't really go to Bass Pro Shops and, you know, get that reel in your hand, put it on a rod, get the feel of it. So you're kind of left with, you know, this kind of deal of, you know, going by what either other people on forums or uh, YouTube videos are describing the palm ability or just overall what it feels like. So before I dive into it, uh, I'm going to show you how, before I dive into how I'm going to show you how I go about it and I will set and debate and just uh, look at reels, different reels from different places to de try to decide on what my next real purchase will be unless it's something just crazy cheap say on aliexpress or a deal you know somebody pops up with a deal on one on a form or something like ah, i'll just buy it and i'll find a use for it try it and if i don't like it i'll get rid of it so before we dive into that i just have a couple questions first of all if any of you guys know what that line is that colored copper colored what that is uh comment below and then I'm going to show you guys this thing. I actually just spotted it out while I looked at this reel the other day and didn't even pay attention to that. I, I know that's how good I look at stuff. But if you guys know where what that exactly is, if you can buy those somewhere, it's basically just a spring uh, with a couple coils so you can, it's a hook keeper, right? So it looks to me like the way they're popped over there, you could do it two ways. You could run actual a smaller hook in there or you could just run the bottom loop of a hook over that but I would think that would fit on almost every bait caster made because they either usually have a screw here like this one does or one on the inside and you could put it in there which maybe wouldn't even stick out as much on some of the newer Daiwa Shimano reels because the as I'm getting ready to talk about it the new reel from Lou's and, and a lot of reels it's nothing new it's been out for a while but this reel has a little deal right there already on it. See that little thing right there? Pops out and it's a bait keeper, right? Because if you guys know, and I think the reason why they do it, I know this video is about bait casters, but on a lot of your rods, uh, in my opinion, they have a horrible way of where the bait keepers are. And I think they mainly are geared towards the tournament guys, guys with the bigger bass boats that have rod lockers and they put the rod in there and they leave the baits on and it's sticking out past, it's the first thing they can see. They can basically tell which rod's got their spinner bait and their different baits on it is why they're way back on the end of the handle. I honestly don't like that. I like it right in front. If you guys have seen under on the bottom side of the rod is where I like it, but uh, something like this where it wouldn't affect or hurt the reel and I know these have probably been out, I'll be honest, because I usually, I go to the first guide on my rod. I don't hook it, you don't hook it through the hole where you would run the line, but on the, you know, one of the legs sticking up I, is usually where I end up just sticking my baits that I do leave on. And usually it's just a clip because I take any of my treble baits off, only like chatter baits, spinner baits, or buzz bait, you know, a single hook jig or something like that. I will leave them on a lot of times. All the other ones I take off to keep it from getting tangled and all that kind of stuff. So anyway, let's find that as I'm looking through. There's several real options that I have. But this one right here, that thing right there, that looks like a good way. I would want to try it. I'd put it on a couple reels. First of all, it, see if you can slide a bait in and out of there without chance of just totally scratching and destroying your reel. If you can put a bait on it. But I'm sure somebody's making those. I've just probably been out of the loop on worrying about it. It's something you don't have to have, but it's just kind of a cool thing that would be handy. So anyway, let's go to what I was talking about. I was up at Rogers Sporting Goods because I'm always in, you know, it's always on my mind what's new, what 
do I want? And I didn't even know they had the new reels out. But they did get in these new reels uh, since the last time I was up at Roger Sporting Goods because it's been a while, right? It's winter. I haven't really been up there in quite a while. So I thought I would really, you know, I would be very tempted to just buy one the minute I had one in hand kind of thing. But I'll be honest, that reel in hand, two things for me, just my opinion. I feel... Uh, I, I'm not gonna like the titanium coated thing. I think they first of all went way too dark It gives it almost a black look and I know for this reel. It's probably okay But like the purple one if you guys remember right the real test did uh, his video Talking about the, the actual one that still was kept in the Korean market. I Think that reel looked way better than these These in person look pretty good, but the minute you touch them you're leaving fingerprints all over them so they instantly go away from that that titanium coating just instantly has a it's not a real shiny look it's almost like when you uh, polish up the Edo AIs right they look good right off the bat uh, these go even faster as far as the minute that you smudge marks anything any oil in your hands or something instantly shows up right on these reels the next thing is it wasn't even me because I haven't had one in hand long enough to go try you know I just held it up at Rogers but the only review review I've seen of a true fisherman using one, uh, he was fishing it in the cold, and he said it makes your hands cold. It fills that uh, titanium coating, basically paint, whatever. It's basically a metal paint or coating or whatever it is, but it's basically going to be like it's going to make your hands cold in the cold. Any part of your skin touching that is going to be just like touching aluminum or any of the other type stuff, right? So... That and the fact that I just, you know, I switched the handle so it's not as big a deal, but I feel that handle is too long, too much of a power handle for that little of a reel. And I know it probably worked just fine. I do like this, so I'll be honest. Out of this whole reel, I like how small it is and how it palms. I did not like how long of a power handle it had on it, but I, I liked this the best. I like the feel of those. I think out on the water, if you guys have seen me and my new, uh, the blue ones I put on the Zillion and the Acuras, it's close to that. It's like a, a big solid feel without having a ton of, you know, a super big, because I do like the old style wind grip knobs, but they're, they're almost too big. And I think they got it right this time. I think if they eventually start putting these on all their reels will be a good thing in my opinion. So, small, compact, lightweight, uh, it was smooth, everything felt smooth on it. Didn't come with the drag clicker, that's a negative for me. Nowadays, if you're going to have a $500 reel, you better have a drag clicker on it. It's just plain and simple. Uh, you could track down a used uh, Ste CT, comes with the drag clicker. Uh, probably a little more refined than this reel, in my opinion. And I don't know if it looks better, but it, it's probably going to, I don't know. That's just my opinion. The next thing is right here, and there's not a good picture. I haven't really seen a good picture on the release. So you can see it right there. Right there, there's a little thing sticking down. You basically just pull that, and it doesn't take much at all. You pull that down, and the side plate pops right off. It's just my opinion, but I think you're going to have some issues, or you could run into issues with that hanging up on something on your coat or somewhere and having that baby just pop off, because it seemed way too easy, in my opinion, for that side uh, hatch to when you pull that down and the way it pops off. You just have to get one in your hands to see what I'm talking about, but I could see that being an issue of how quick and easy that thing releases on, or it pops off to where if you're trans, and, and it would, it, I don't think it would be too big a deal fishing it, maybe extreme colder weather, you know, bulky or, uh, clothing on possibly but in transport i could definitely see that being the issue especially like someone like me puts on a, those sock things and when you go to pull them off but i just in my opinion that could be an issue but overall it feels very good i think it's in my opinion it's overpriced it if it was 350 dollars, i probably would have bought one uh, now up at rogers you can contact them i can't remember the exact model but they are selling a pretty lightweight one for two hundred dollars uh the older models you know of course something new pops up when they get it in so some of their older loos are on sale up at rogers you guys could check with them i can't remember it's not this exact one that this one replaced 
but it is a uh, more of a bright silver color with the bigger wind grips. It's an awesome feeling reel. Feels, in my opinion, feels as good as that reel, but it doesn't palm as good. And for 200 bucks, I would have definitely, if I were for sure wanting to buy a reel, you know, to replace something right away, I would have probably picked that reel over this $500 reel. The older model. And uh, the, I think the purple one that the other one replaced it, it's 400, is like 350. It'll probably be on sale. That uh, they palm, they palm pretty good. So anyway, uh, I'm glad I didn't, I almost pre-ordered one of these. I'm very glad I did not mess with this reel. I will not be buying any of these in the future. If it were to come down, like I said, 350, maybe uh, all the way down to 300 before I would think about just buying one, just to even try out. And you guys know me, if at some point if I ended up not liking it, it would be bye-bye. But I'm definitely not going to spend, even though they've been on sale. You could have bought this at one time for just over $400, and you could have bought the purple one. If you guys don't know, they, the pro version, the TI is purple. It sells for $399, and you can get it sometimes for like $329. I, I still won't be looking forward to trying to buy that reel. But I'll tell you, let me show you the reel that I was impressed with. I didn't even ask the kid. He went, we were uh, geeking out over these reels, and he just went and grabbed this one. He goes, look at this, you know, and uh, the reel test did a, test on the LTX, not the MG LTX that's on Tackle Warehouse, he even mentioned that, that it's not that one, but the true BFS version. This reel right here, that drag star is pretty like uh, small design. I, it's kind of cool, but then you kind of might be kind of hard to get to. But this is another reel that had crazy big, like this reel felt lopsided in my opinion just because of how much weight. I would swear those two knobs and the gear weigh more than the whole rest of the reel. I'm 100% sure of it. This is a very small, lightweight reel that feels very smooth, for, especially for like an Abu, Abu Garcia reel. And it has a drag clicker. I'm pretty sure, that, well, don't hold me 100% to I'm pretty sure that's the one that had a drag clicker that surprised me. I'm like, oh, it does have a drag clicker. But I didn't think I would like these. You know, they kind of are the highest in now over the Revos. But that reel felt very good. So I'm sure that the one the reel test did for BFS fishing is going to also be a very good reel so anyway it's still it's crazy price look at that 449 dollars like i will not be buying that reel i bought and i they had they still have a couple at roger i don't know how many but they have one in the case so they probably have some on the shelves too the mg extreme too you guys remember that story i bought a brand new one off ebay when they very first came out i was one of the first guys to get one also they're awesome reels but man 500 dollars that's just too much for a reel Right? We can go to AliExpress and get a $70 reel that does everything. It may not last as long, but who knows for sure. That MG Extreme 2, these Abu, Abu Garcia, I know I'm only a drink in tonight, but the Abu Garcia higher end Revos or Revos in general are, uh, a lot of guys will try to say they don't last. They are very good and long lasting reels in my opinion. Now anybody, you can go out and beat the crap out of stuff and make it not last, but I had a guy spun the spool shaft on a Tatula. That is almost impossible to do, but when you glue down the brake pads and uh, put however big a line he had on it, well, you can, you can do a lot to a lot of these reels if you are uh, destructive enough, I guess. So that reel right there is not on my list, but that is an awesome reel. I would pick it over the Lose, to be honest. The Lose, I think, looks a little better, but in hand, filling them, and just, I don't know, I guess, you know, the feel of you're getting what you pay for kind of thing. I think you're getting a shiny paint job that actually is gonna be cold in your hands. Uh, so I think if they redo this, I do like the fact that Lou's have all gotten a little flatter right up in here. Uh, I'm, uh, Casking's kind of in that, you know, the, the pointed thing, like the old, uh, all the barons and stuff. They're just kind of, I think they all need to get away from that. The alphas needs to also get to where the, where you put your thumb, if you guys are like me and you palm the reel, 
get to that kind of like the new uh well kind of like the older zillion and the newest zillion have a flat spot there for your thumb it just makes it more comfortable in all day fishing so anyway let's go with the reels i've been looking at because here's my dilemma i've got my heavy action rod so if you're you know wanting to uh stay you know i don't want to go too big of a reel but i still want you know small compact but i'm not necessarily worried about the weight as much because i almost need more weight to balance out it's only a seven foot but it's a heavy action so it's a little tip heavy for me so another reel that i did not even plan on where is it thinking about buying until i held one and saw it in person when I was up at Rogers is this thing, the Zillion 10. It came out right around, I think, when the whole COVID stuff hit. So I don't know if it got much love, publicity or whatever, but it's kind of a, you know, some, some people would probably call it a, you know, hodgepodge or mixed bag of Daiwa goodies, but it's kind of a combination of a Steez and a Zillion. And it's kind of a combination of two different models of Zillions because the older generation that was wider before they kind of went into the compact, like what the Tatulas were, had the flatter, wider top, kind of like the original Tatula Type R, bigger, wider. They had this kind of uh, side plate with this uh, cover on the side. So they've, they've kind of got that older side plate, which looked better in my opinion, it's gonna add a little bit of weight, but then it's got the top, which is like the generation before the 1000 that's out right now. So it's gonna palm better than the older one, Be it's more of the compact frame. And then they've actually got what is more of a Steez side plate on it. And if you pay attention, what some guys were knocking back in the day with the original uh, T-Wing Zillion when it came out, it had one little uh, kind of guard here. This was originally designed to help keep from, you, as you'll be seeing in some of these reels, they get scratched up from being on the boat deck. And that was kind of the, keep that from happening as I, well, I think they put on the original like zillions and when this first generation uh, t-wing came out it had one on one side and nothing on the other well so they they added that on both sides on this reel they've got the two different types of paint so you got a shiny uh some will call it better looking in my opinion i think it probably look better if it's all this color but then they've got the more matte uh satin type it's going to be a little more uh less likely to be slippery when wet, right? But then until you really look at one in person and realize that that is not a actual blue, it's more like the uh, Gomexis rainbow colored drag star you guys seen. Now there's no gold in, or green, it's pretty much just different colors of blue and some purple. But I think a Gomexis drag star on there with the Gomexis gold uh, zero adjuster and I could actually this zillion the chameleon spool I already have I could put in there if, if I wanted to use this for BFS it's a crazy heavy tank for a BFS reel or I could just uh, this uh, reel would also hold the uh, uh, one of the boost spools I have for my zillions now or the PE special shallow one you can buy off Digitaka for a hundred so you have a lot of options I could do with this reel if I decided to buy one. So this is one actually on eBay right now that's for sale. I don't can't hardly make out any scratches on it. I could get one of those uh, bait keepers and put on it or you can't on you probably can't on anything but so yeah this thing just with a little bit of gold back here uh, that Gomexus rainbow colored drag star actually six point star and it's going to have some gold in it. You guys have seen it on uh, my Zillion 1000. But this reel, it just, it feels good in hand. It looks, it looks good. It looks a little better in person. Uh, I don't like this. It's too much black. I would definitely change that out. I would maybe stick with, uh, it depends. I might go with the carbon. I just try it. I try it with the silver, you know, aluminum handle or a carbon fiber, but then I would probably, you know, the handle, the knob 
the handle would be one of the two of those, but the knob would probably be, uh, depending on what reel, or uh, sorry, what rod I was going to put it on, the handle knob would probably be set up to kind of match that if it was something with the cork. Handle, I would put the cork knob or that kind of thing just to match it up. So that one's on my radar still, and I didn't even really think about it until I got one in hand. But then I've been debating about this reel, and I go, I went back and I rewatched the reel test when he put this up against the Corrado 70, because at one time I thought about getting a Corrado 70 to try out on an older reel, right? Just because it is small, it's a little heavier than these uh, uh, carbon reels. But there's a good deal on this reel, and it comes with this, you know, you're gonna get that uh, gold spool, and then the stock spool still is with it. And I believe Matt may need one of these. I don't know if he needs it for a regular Tatula or Tatula SP, I can't remember. I think I sold him a reel that needed a spool, I don't know, five years ago? But anyway, that reel, just for the fact that it comes with that, and I'm pretty sure that's a fixed inductor, uh, more finesse type, probably pitching and flipping type stuff than the true SV spool. But that reel has definitely been on my radar, or just one of those in general, but that's a pretty clean one, not a bad uh, price on it. So what I'm thinking about doing, as you guys probably saw, this is a 6.3, so this is gonna be geared down uh, then that high gear 10 to 1, I'll probably put that on my 7 foot heavy and I would put this one on my uh, 7 foot medium moderate for cranking, slowing down somewhat, maybe even throw my uh, 3 8 ounce with the smaller hook, the AliExpress chatterbaits on that medium moderate, just to have a throw them and then throw on my medium heavy and just uh, because no matter really how you try, you kind of tend to get into, you have a certain slow speed or a normal speed when you're reeling. And so if you change gear ratio reels, you actually are still changing, even if you tried to imitate gearing down, you know, changing from 6.3 to 7.5 to 1. You can't really truly imitate it for very long periods of time without like switching. So it's on my mind of like, you know, and I thought about doing a couple video series on that, like, going to a 6.3 or maybe an 8 to 1 and which one you know is better than the other because I feel sometimes we don't fish slow enough so you're probably going well why are you looking at that 10 to 1 well when you're throwing jigs uh, frogs uh, almost any top water where you can see the bait and you can tell how fast you want to be going or what you're doing with it. Uh, sometimes that faster reel is just a better overall reel. But then when you're cranking or even with chatter baits or spinner baits, sometimes you tend to fish them too fast. You're not staying down low enough. You're, it could be just the fact you're a little leery of hanging something up on the bottom or you're just in a hurry, period. And sometimes you just it pays to slow down. So I've been debating about doing that just to... Uh, just something to do, honestly. But then I have I'm, what I'm kind of up in the air also about. Do I want to go with that? Because that reel is not going to be as smooth. I've never seen a Tatula as smooth as a Zillion, even though they're more or less based on the same frame as we go back to the one I originally started with. So you see they look pretty much alike. They're based basically on the same size frame, but they are different there. If you guys rem remember the Salamandura, and the alphas, right? The Salamandura 70 is the same as the Tatula 70 SV, but the alphas uh, SV is gonna be a smoother, uh, it's got the shorter shaft, a little more bearing, it's just a little, I don't know if you call it more refined reel, but it definitely has, uh, I guess, a, overall, you know, that's one of the ways Daiwa does uh, design into it makes the other reels the zillions and the alphas more expensive and the reason they're more expensive is they're just that touch better quality kind of like shimano will do on certain stuff they kind of like real test talks about i keep bringing up the real test but it is true on a lot of stuff he says about how they uh, will engineer to make sure that that spool isn't going to outperform the spool in the other higher end reels but they're kind of went away from it over the but they raise the price on the cheaper reels but they'll put out like stuff in these slx's that is pretty high quality stuff and then they uh, 
just raise the price on it. But if you guys remember, right, the whole T-Wing system originally came out, the T3, which was kind of a reel on its own. But then when they first put the actual T-Wing system we know now that pops up and down and the hood doesn't raise up, that's actually brought out on the cheapest reel period, the Tatula. And then it slowly worked its way up into the Steez, right? So anyway, these would basically do the same exact thing, right? They're both 6'3". This one, I am 100% sure, I don't know who's owned them, they're used, but I'm 100% sure that that one will be smoother than the Tatula. And they're roughly same prices kind of thing. So I've been debating about getting one of these. The, this one does not look as good. That's almost like a bluish color. The only downside. They look good on the uh, carbon light rods. But I do believe that this Tatula SV performed and looked better than almost any reel in that class size. Is why this was a very, and still is, a very popular reel. Kind of like the Cronark D back in the day. That reel was popular because it just worked and it looked probably better than anything was out there at the time. So let's talk about another reel that I do not want, but man, I don't know. And that is the Steez, the CTs. They are just smaller and I thought I had one and we're going to talk about that later. Yeah, here we go. This reel right here. Do you guys ever have dreams about reels? No, I don't either, but <laughs> I'm just saying. The Steez CT, I'd already bought one of these. If I, if you guys remember my whole purple rod, the issue I've had where I feel I can't get the hookups like I'm wanting on these, uh, the uh, Lure Star rods from AliExpress. That they're like $125 rods, basically. Awesome filling rods, but I feel my hookup ratio is just horrible. Man, one of these DCTs, that reel right there would be awesome on either the filling or the uh, quick. But, I don't know. I know the refinement, like this reel is very hard to beat. So while we're talking about that, these are just things that are on my mind and there. Where you can go is, as you see me maybe browsing, I go to Digitaka, Japan Tackle. I've showed you guys in one other video the Ichabon Tackle, or Ichabon, however it's pronounced. Uh, eBay. Actually, you can go to uh, AliExpress, and let's just type it in and see if I can find that one. If you were thinking about getting a, uh, let's just type in, oh my god. I'm looking... Hang on, let me get my hands on the computer right so the Silver Creek so right here you can get the Daiwa Silver Creek Air TW 2022 it's 314 right now but it's uh, you get five dollars off every 40 spent so the minute you just click on that one and just buy it because I recommend just buying it they're gonna take off uh, 15 which is the match you can get off of it but it drops it just under three hundred dollars for that reel So no matter what reel you're looking for, if you're looking for a new one, it wouldn't hurt to, to just uh, type it in the search on AliExpress and see what they're selling it for. But between, like most of my buying is done either I mention it uh, on maybe a forum somewhere and you can go Tackle Tour has forums for sale, buy and sell forums, uh, Bass Boat Central, probably those two is the ones I would use as far as forums go. Uh, and then uh, like BFS Fishing, you know, the, you, if you guys are familiar with any of the fishing uh, YouTube or YouTube, uh, Facebook groups you're on, there's also good places just kind of with your buddies you can swap reels back and forth with. But like I mentioned, AliExpress uh, for used or new, eBay, and then of course Digitaka, Japan Tackle, and there's probably several others. And if you guys know of others, you recommend, and I'm sure there's some of them I'm not thinking of. And uh, also I should mention uh, Bait Finesse Empire has a lot of different uh, BFS stuff for sure. 
So if you're looking for a new BFS reel, there they'd be one to check. Especially like right now, it's not a big a deal because you can just order it and wait for it. We're not really all out fishing right now. But if you're in a search in a hurry for a BFS reel, uh, Bait Finesse Empire is probably one of the first ones you want to look at because they can usually get it to you about as quick as anybody. And then would probably honestly be uh, Digitaka or Japan Tackle. They're pretty fast about shipping stuff. Uh, you can't really get much here in the States like as far as Tackle Warehouse and oh I also should mention just because some of you guys still love the thought of a very cheap BFS reel like I'm not in the market for these anymore but the uh, let's see if we can find it here somewhere I, there was a crazy deal on the Casking Zephyr they were selling it for like I and I don't know, I don't, I can't, I might be able to find it on my phone, but I just, just browsing. I'm not in the market for one, and there's the Arise reel. I got one of those that should be here next week. It's not BFS, but all around reel. Jay talked me into that one. There's the Lingle variants. Remember, I talked about those. They're calling them cronies, but they're expensive. I wouldn't pay that much, but if you guys are in love with those uh, Lingle variants and different ones, uh, search crony if you don't know about that. But the, if you type in uh, Cast King Zephyr, and I want to say they were, and this is still going to be cheap if you get five bucks off, so, you know, $55 if you like that reel. But I would honestly get one of the Dark Wolf Alter variants before, oh, I don't want you, before I would buy that Zephyr. But if you still like that, Palm's a little bit bigger. And then I probably can't find it, but that $20 green reel, which is almost this uh, shape, but it is a little bit bigger reel than the Casking Zephyr for 20 bucks if you're wanting the cheapest all around kind of reel that it, it's kind of tried to be a BFS reel but it's not a true ultralight BFS and then there of course the Salamander is one of the last reels I bought so let's go back to Shimano now so I'm searching for reels that I want to buy and I'm kind of been on the Daiwa path because a lot of stuff interchanges right but then let's go to Shimano. So this is probably my favorite reel that I'm looking at on the Shimano side if I want to throw it on my seven foot heavy action rod, right? It's the Bantam. It, it's, it can handle it. It's very small. This is one of the better palming reels you'll ever palm. This is the older model. I don't even like the newer one compared to this. I know it's probably got a little better performance, but if I buy one, it'll be one of these and it'll probably be a used because uh, I don't even know if you could find a new one anywhere. Uh, Rogers has a couple left. So they don't have any rights in stock. So that reel right here, and the, the left-handed they have at Rogers feels smoother than the new uh, right-handed one. But I wanted to talk real quick about the metaniums because what I found out while I was up at Rogers, and I'm not trying to dog the metanium reel because you guys all know I haven't fished one. It's supposed to be better than the old one. I like the 2016 model I had. This dude right here, I think. Loved just uh, how everything worked on that reel. Palm, a little big. It looks small, but it's kind of like the Shimano's used to be. The Corrado K still is. Those sizes palm, uh, they look small, but they palm bigger than they look. It's hard to explain. It's the craziest thing I've seen. The Corrado K, the Scorpion, the, that was the same way. But awesome reel. Man, that's a casting machine. Real smooth. That's probably the smoothest low-profile bait casting reel I've ever owned. And it was used. And I don't know how well used it was, but that thing, I think it was a high gear. Uh, but, man, that was a... The only reel I've had that's smoother than that reel, you guys heard me talk about it before, the Calcutta Conquest BFS is the, smooth, the only smooth reel I've owned that was smoother than this one. The Metaniums, let's find a better picture. This dude right here, every one I've seen, it's only two or three up at Rogers, but the guy pulled a new one out of the package because he had a left and he grabbed a right. And those reels, have a resistance when you're reeling them, just like you guys heard me talk about my Aldebaran, the 22 I just recently got rid of to brew tank. There's a resistance there, and we tried to like track it down, and I was thinking 
it's it's possibly in the fact that if you guys don't know that Shimano's kind of went to a plastic uh, worm gear, right? It's it. I think they went away from the hardened aluminum. Like there's a hard anodizing process that goes on most of the some don't the cheaper ones, but most of the higher quality worm gears are like a hardened anodized aluminum. It's almost the same color as our old RC shock towers used to be. But uh, I'm pretty sure on this reel and the other ones, but the funny thing is the Bantam, and then uh, he brought out uh, the Corrado 150, and that's another reel I've totally spaced off until I just now thought about it. Uh, he grabbed a, that new Corrado uh, 150. Man, that thing actually is nice. Like if I was going to buy uh, just a Shimano uh, small lightweight reel to try out, it would not be the MGL just based off holding it in hand. And it uh, probably wouldn't be the new band because it's a touch heavy if I wasn't worried about the color. The problem with that Corrado is it doesn't really go with anything. But as far as, in my opinion, maybe the best reel I've held in a while from Shimano was that Corrado 150. I would have picked it over that uh, Lou's reel. I probably would have picked it over the higher end Abu Garcia if, you know, money wasn't an object. And it is way cheaper. So I can foresee in my future at some point probably getting one of those uh, Corrado 150s. I liked that reel. That reel felt good and it felt smoother, like less resistance. And I, I hate to, like smoothness, there's a difference in my opinion from there's smooth, like you can't really feel the gears, there, but then there's a resistance. Like you can feel something in the rotation. It doesn't feel free. Like some of those it feels like as you let go of the knob it just keeps going like it's just it's so free the aldebaran aldebaran the calcutta conquest bfs is probably the takes that to a whole nother level than like i talked about the the older metanium i had and then the zillion would be the next reel of the older zillion anyway the 10 i held even though it was a 10 to 1 it just had this crazy nothing there feel to it, and and so did the older version they have up there. The honestly, my reels that I have, the 1000, I like the size better. I think even though they've got that supposedly newer gear, I don't think they feel quite as free as the older version of the Zillion or that Zillion 10. I think takes it to a whole nother level, and it's probably something they added somewhere, maybe quality of bearings, more bearing count. But I even added the two bearings that my zillion was missing. But so, and it's what's funny is out on the water, it's probably not even something I'm noticing. But once it's in your head, it's in your head, right? So to justify buying the reels that, first of all, I do not like the way that reel looks. I don't like that feel of the, the few I've handled because that thing feels way stiffer than my Aldebaran 22 did. And... I know it's new, but so are these other reels that I'm, you know, like my zillions when I first get them, you guys see me do a ton of unboxings on a lot of new reels. And somebody's probably going to say, well, it's, it's just because it's got so much grease or whatever, but I don't care. There's, when you're, you know, that one left-handed, I don't know how long it's been in their shop or, you know, people that's out on display, it had that, you could just feel it. Like every reel, and I, I don't know, he probably pulled out 10 to 12 different reels that we were looking at. And both the metaniums he had, that was the hardest, like, resistance fill reel out of all. And they're crazy smooth. They, they are a smooth. You can't feel the gears, but there's a resistance. I think it's all in the, uh, the Anna Reverse roller bearing. I think the tolerances, I don't know. I think somehow they've goofed. I don't know if they'll ever break in right, to be honest with you. The, uh, he even put the, I think he put the new one. He pulled out a package right-handed to let me hold it. I think he went over and put it on because the machine's right there where they spool up line for customers. And I think he ran it through one or two cycles of like what you would, you know, fill the spool full of just to see if we could get it to, you know, feel different. And it, it didn't really change how it felt. So with that on my mind, I'm like, hmm. Because they didn't have it in the shallow version. They just had that version like you're seeing right there with the MGL3 spool. But this reel is now available with that shallow or spool and I just can't make myself buy it if it uh I don't know it's just like the other one I mean 
it's hard to justify spending honestly nowadays anything over two hundred dollars for a reel when you can buy a seventy dollar reel that will go out and do all your fishing needs it may only make it a couple years or whatever but if you're like me and i'm always changing up you guys have seen you guys know the channel i change rod and reel lineups about as fast as i change underwear right weekly so anyway on to other things what else do we need to talk about if we're talking about all the rod and reels i don't know should i turn this into the top pick of the year since it's the end of the year oh there's brew tank bonsai come off the xmas bonus and get the conquest dc best round reel ever made which one are you talking about i haven't really been in the loop on the DC reels. They make a brand new DC one, or are you talking about one of the older ones they made? Now I know they made the, uh, oh shoot, what's, I can't remember the name of it now. But like one of the first true finesse round reels wasn't the Conquest, it was uh, Cardiff, I think. And then they had the Shallow Spool uh, Calcutta Conquest 50. I had one of those. That, I don't know. None of that older stuff, nowadays stuff, you can buy that $55 uh, Dark Wolf Ultra, you can buy the Acura for 70 bucks, and you can go out and smoke what the older stuff did. For me, anyway. And how I remember fishing it, and what it could throw, and what it couldn't throw. Actually, just from a few years back, the older, a lot of the older stuff is outdated, in my opinion. And that kind of brings me to, like, where... I keep, I know I'm not going to keep this stuff for long because I'm not a collector. I want to fish it. I want to have fun fishing it. I want the comfort, the look, the feel, the cool factor, all that. But then I know in a couple years, if that long, it's like a smartphone. Something new's out I'm going to want. I'm going to want to resell this. I want to be able to make, you know, not money on it. I want to be able to recoup some of my money kind of stuff. So I'm not necessarily real picky on that part, but it is in my mind when I'm buying something. And in my opinion, uh, I don't know. I don't even know. I haven't checked sales. But in my opinion, they should be at some point. That should get something changed. And I don't know what it is with everybody going with these darker reels. Like, I know the tournament fishermen necessarily don't care a lot. But I think everybody kind of likes a brighter silver or a more metal color like they've drifted away from a, a lot of these reels as they get more plasticky carbon fiber parts on the frames it, it's kind of nice to still give them that i call it gunmetal alumini look to where they you know they look more i guess solid built than they probably honestly are because although they're still mostly tanks, they're not like the tanks of the old days. Like some of these old reels were over 10 ounces and they were monsters. Like you're not gonna wear those reels out ever. But the technology and the just fact of going and trying to fish them all day, when you've got, you know, the minute you put a smaller bait casting rod and reel in your hand, you start fishing it, all the other ones start feeling, oh, that's bigger, that's heavier, right? You kind of get to the point where you, you find yourself grabbing some of your uh, favorite bait casting rod and reel combos become are sort of maybe not the best overall for the job, but they're just more comfortable using for longer periods of time. And so you'll make yourself use those. So I'm kind of trying to just fine tune that. But I, and I think if I'm ever gonna have a spot where this reel, not that reel, not that reel, this reel would fit, would be right now for that, uh, seven foot heavy action. So what are your guys' thoughts? Uh, and then comment, I don't even know how many different spools are available for this. I know there's gotta be some other spool than that one. I know there's probably not anything from Shimano, but I don't know what's available for this one. The, the fact that I like this reel better, I know I've got a lot of options on what I could do with this reel, if I chose to. Not that I would. I may just throw it with what it's got in it, but I, I would probably, what I'd probably do, if I decide and I decide to buy this, 
for where did it go? Oh, stop switching them. If I bought this zillion or this zillion, uh, where'd it go? Nah. I'd probably go ahead and buy the shallow, the P special spool from Digitaka, and I'd probably end up putting it on my uh, zillion 1000, repurposing uh, one of those reels for something else. I would put the spool that that reel came with, the SV Boost, into this one or the other one, and having it on the you know, whatever real. So if I ended up buying this, I'll put it on that seven foot heavy, but then I can't really go through my, what uh, what I was kind of gonna do, the testing on the 6.3 and the 10 to one, cause then I could swap those reels back and forth. I could actually just see like, what what if I speed crank? What if I put the 10 to one on the seven foot medium moderate and I just, you know, you know, kind of compare that and then I know I'd, I wouldn't want to put anything too slow on that your frog and jig type thing because there there's no point having a real slow reel on a basically point what I call point and shoot like I'm pointing I'm shooting to a certain spot I am maybe going five foot possibly ten then I'm really I want to come back fast and get a cast back out to on the edge of something or right at a stump you know right wherever or on bottom or up in the underneath a tree around a lily pad area and then come right back you do not definitely want to use that, but it's people can argue once you get to moving baits, like is there times where a slow, even a five, five to one would be better than a nine to one or 10 to one, you know, is it maybe better if, if like, say the bite is just on, you're out there and they're just like everything you're throwing, they're tearing it up. And it seems like you can't go fast enough. Like everything's charging, you know, as soon as it hits, it's charging you. Maybe you'd be better off to throw on your fastest reel, you know, and, and keep fishing that way, less likely to lose the fish kind of deal. So, I don't know. What, I, what I'd what need, I don't need any of these. I actually have enough stuff. I've got two Dark Wolf Ultra setting, not even using. At the moment, since I bought the Salamandura, I have uh, Accurate 8 to 1, just really setting that I don't even have an exact purpose for it. So if you guys follow the channel, you've probably seen, I've got five or six BFS rods that I like and a handful of any of them BFS reels I can use, right? So then on my regular bait caster stuff, basically I have two zillion 1000s, two of the accurate seven to one ratios. I like those ratios. That seven to one just seems good all around. But there may be times where this even slower ratio would work. And you could always even go slower than that. You take a six, three to one, just put a little less line. You're going to slow it down to the right out of six. You could even probably get it into five, eight to one, like a lot of your older Daiwa alphas were. But I don't really, and then with the Salamandura, that gives me five solid combos to go out and fish with. And I've that six, nine medium heavy with the seven to one Acura can cover a ton of different, just general bass fishing baits. That is an awesome rod in the reel at that mid range, you know, seven to one gear ratio. It can, you could, I could probably go out and fish almost everything I fish with that setup. Hookup ratios, you know, landing the fish, is it the best tool? No, but I could probably go out and do almost everything. But, we can never truly have too many rod and reel combos. Keep that in mind. All right, this is going to be about a 50 minute video. Brew Tank is talking again. Uh... <laughs> Brew Tank says, Keep the fireball shots uh, going, Jack giveaway at midnight. Well, my fireball shots, if you guys can make out my red solo cup, here's what I decided I like better. What I, I know, this is a fishing video, and I hate to like, steer you guys in the wrong way some of you maybe you know decided to stop drinking I don't really drink that much but when I do I like to drink foo foo drinks now but what I have decided over what I used to do is just you know put fireball on ice and sip it with whatever I was drinking maybe it was a Mike's hard lemonade angry orchard crisp apple something a little foo foo but still you know and I would sip on the fireball 
or something like that. But now what I've decided, and Olivia is the one that told me this. She's like, uh, cinnamon Coke. And I'm like, what are you talking about? She goes, you just put a shot of Fireball in your Coke. Well, I drink Diet Coke. So a shot of Fireball to about a can of Coke or maybe a shot and a half. And man, you can just, that, it's a good slow way just to slowly drink. Still doesn't hurt to drink a glass of water here and there. And so we're not really taking Fireball shots tonight. We're not going anywhere. We're here for the night, so you'll probably see a few more videos and it may get nuts. Just be prepared if it does. I'm going to put for sure a video out showing you my probably top BFS rod, BFS reel, and then my just regular top uh, all around, you know, uh, and I may split that even up, but all around uh, rod and reel for just general bass fishing. But I may split up the BFS to the true ultralight and then just all around what you guys may use for BFS in general or bass BFS and trout BFS. It, you can almost classify like in two different things with BFS. And BFS is just a term, Shimano came up with it. Uh, people were calling it bait finesse, bait finesse systems. And Shimano is the first one that they like threw it on their reels. All the Daiwa reels will say air. They're basically meaning they're de designated for that true, you know, ultralight BFS fishing. And the ultralight gets lower and lower as the technology lets you throw lower and lower. Like your first BFS stuff were really basically just finesse type stuff now in today's, you know, market to what you're capable of doing. And if that Aldebaran 22 spool is that light, that aftermarket one, then you may see, uh, you may be able to go out and actually truly fish a trout magnet, not necessarily in wind, but just more comfortably in very, no wind to only a mile an hour or two. Maybe, maybe not. It really doesn't matter what you're trying to throw. When you're throwing something that's only a gram, you should probably be, probably be using a fly rod. So as I get out of here, I'm gonna give you one more little kind of hint on stuff I do or I, the way I fish with BFS uh, it's kind of a combination of stuff we're going to midnight we're not going to midnight on this video but I will be back on other videos and I keep trying to make these videos shorter so they'll get you know a year or so down the road somebody may click on one actually watch it longer or if they think they could possibly get through it they you got to be a diehard to get through one of my videos. Let's put it that way. But I've kind of started using, and just the way I look at it, right, like bro science kind of a thing of it, there's a couple of different ways you can look at your uh, line. So I use only braid, braid to a leader. I do not like spooling any type. I haven't, and I don't want to, I, like, oh, well, you got to use the good sniper, FC sniper, this and that. Man, that stuff's expensive. One little backlash, it gets kinked, that line is done. Uh, braid, uh, and I use it for a, in a couple different ways, basically. And what I've kind of adapted to, and I like this about it, is with the uh, BFS stuff, I find I can stick uh, just 10 pound. I can see it better, and, I, and then I can go to a smaller leader. It's more manageable, easier to use. It's kind of like the, the way you see guys talk about, oh, throw 50 pound on your regular stuff because it just throws better. It just does some stuff better. It's, it's more manageable. The, the thinner you go, the smaller you go, there's just more issues. It's actually easier to get out a backlash or different stuff with something a little bit bigger than you can see. So what I kind of do a 10 pound test we put it on, and Charles at one time, I think he was using 15, then we get to these smaller spools and you really can't, but, because uh, there's not a huge difference between 10 and 15 pound braid. There's not a huge, huge, huge difference between Hercules 10 pound and 15 pound braid. But so with 10 pound, it's not a huge difference over six. There is a difference. If you're definitely dealing with a shallow spool, like uh, some of your very, very uh, shallow BFS spools, most of them, though, dark will falter in them, you can deal with it. It'll hold enough 10 pound line to where then you can go, even if you're only ever gonna go six or four, maybe even go down to two. I kinda, the, what I, how I think of it is, I'm using that line almost like some guys would uh, fly line. Now the fly line's big and thick and whatever, just so you can cast it. But you never hear anybody talking about, oh man, my fly line broke. Oh man, that fly line, I gotta worry about, you know, what, well, what type of fly line? 
you only worry about that for the distance, right? What you're doing fly line, but you basically, the fly line isn't what you're worried about. You're worried about your leader, your tip of material or that. So it's kind of like that with BFS. Like I like to give the fish a fighting chance and it's fun. BFS is more fun than fishing with regular gear. Like you catch a two pounder on my seven foot heavy, it's like game over. If you want to, you can just reel as fast as you can reel and pull him right in the boat and there's no fight or nothing. Honestly, there's really not. You guys watch the tournament stuff like, but you take a BFS, you got 10 pound, say you're running six pound or you run 10, I usually ten, run 10 pound when I'm out regular fishing or whatever. But if I'm going to creeks and streams, I still take that 10 pound, go out there, put a six pound. I usually just go to six now. Like I've, I've kind of just decided six pound is thin enough to I don't think it spooks definitely not any bass they don't really care uh p line original talked about that forever but then i'm basically i have no issues that braid will last probably i don't even know how long i've used some of it uh if you're worried about it you can basically fish it that season like unwind it you kind of have to have a couple reels around or a spooling machine or whatever but basically you can unwind it or turn it around outside like you know go out tie it to a tree somewhere to your car deal in the parking lot, run all the line off, cut it there or whatever, go back, retie to the other end, re-spool it up. The whole half that's probably never even seen the water, it's probably gotten wet from being soaked through, but it's not worn at all. Then you're dealing with that half for another season, but you can definitely get a few seasons out of 10 pound braid. Uh, if you're, and you're already getting it from the Proberos or the Hercules, which is cheaper anyway. And it's just one less, cost factor in fishing now if you're a tournament guy i know you don't want to hear none of that if if you're fishing a tournament there's a whole different uh picking your gear your baits the line how often you switch stuff like there's completely two different sides to your everyday guy that's out fishing and your guy that's in tournaments trying to uh like make every fish bite count 100 percent. it's a little different you're you're like screw giving the fish a fighting chance or the fun you know it's still fun i get it and all that but uh, then there's the other side so in my opinion it's kind of a cross between that i'm i'm kind of giving myself some security with the 10 pound instead of and just the ease overall ease of use is use is the main reason uh the and I've dealt, I've, I've tried some of the six pound. It's, I don't know, I just, it's, the day in and day out when you're dealing with it and just tying, even tying a leader to it, uh, getting a backlash out, even if, I don't know, it just, it always ends up being more of an issue, especially with my old eyes, than the 10 pound. The 10 pound's more of an issue than a 15 or a 20. But I am going to put 20 on whichever reel I finally decide put on that uh, heavy action which right now I've got the zillion on it the zillion 1000 but it's hard to explain but the zillion 1000 palms awesome on almost everything but those carbon lights it palms good but it's almost like it it tightens up underneath it's like the triggers in a little bit different of a spot and I think that reel or the Bantam would probably palm I would maybe feel better than the Zillion. I honestly can tell you that I do not think any of the reels I'm talking about will outcast my Zillion or overall feel better. But I think on that seven foot heavy, a touch heavier reel would let me, I have to use less weight on the very back. Like right now I've got like a two ounce, uh, I've got, I don't even know what they call that. It's not an egg sinker, but I've got two ounces of lead on the back of that seven foot heavy and it's still a little tip heavy. Uh, with the zillion so uh, just a touch more weight I think I could stick with that two ounce weight and it would be a balanced combo actually with maybe even way less than that if I get that Bantam I stick a Bantam on there and it's probably ounce and a half if that and for those of you who don't know what I'm talking about like what are you talking about balance why would you add weight to a bait casting rod and reel combo I like to be able to Somewhere on these two fingers, as I'm holding that rod and reel combo, I like it to be perfectly balanced there. Now, for uh, maybe a jerk bait is about the only thing, jerk bait rod and reel combo is the only thing I probably wouldn't want a little more balance. 
maybe you could say any of your moving bait, uh, you know, for, so for only like Texas rigs, uh, flipping, pitching, where you're, you're holding the rod up, would you want to have that balance? But I find I like it. I like to fish braid to a leader on all my rod and reel combos, and I like to have all my rod and reel combos more or less balanced, and I like the reel to f just be a comfortable palming reel. So that's what we're shooting for. So I'm going to end this video. Oh, one hour and 20 seconds. Stay tuned. I'll be back with my top, like I mentioned, of the end of the year uh, rod reels and basically the ones from AliExpress. And do I think there's a need to get any of the high-end JDM uh, ultralight uh, rods? No. No, I don't. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Uh-oh, somebody just, oh man, I'm never going to get out of here. Uh, Jay Brown, up until last year I would only use PP, but uh, decided to try some 9-strand PE this year from Alley and really like it. Says he does run a little heavier. At 15 pound, not much different diameter from 10 pound. Yeah, like uh, Charles, I think he just bought some crazy amount of Hercules uh, from AliExpress of 15. Uh, I don't know, one of those huge spools, and he was just running 15 on like whatever whatever reel he had, whether it was a BFS reel or not. And I mean, you honestly can, but if you really want to. Like if you're out there and you really want to go like, and that's probably what me and Charles need to do is make ourselves just uh, go lightweight, maybe even do a two pound, four pound challenge or something and go to a couple of those little creeks and streams. Like you guys have seen, I, I caught almost a two pound bass out of there and uh, we've caught a, uh, what did Charles catch? Was it a carp, drum, something that weighed like a pound and a half, but you're not going to catch very big fish on some of these little creeks and streams. So we could probably go with just a straight line uh on stuff like that but you know just because it's a bfs reel uh doesn't mean you have to use it for very light line now if you're using the ultralight rod then you want to stick with the rod rating roughly which i never do that's why i broke some of my uh ultralight rods even a light rod over the years but yeah you uh and that's the thing about the bfs kind of people are you know, we call it, we, you know, power BFS is really just a, you know, general all around bass fishing with BFS gears, kind of the power version of the new guys that are going to the very little creeks and streams, whether it be for bass or trout or the little bitty impoundments, ponds, real small lakes, or maybe you just find a section of lake that's loaded with huge bluegill or some, you know, even little crappie and you're just having fun with BFS stuff, uh, ultralight gear like you would ultralight spinning type stuff so there's really there's like two sides to bfs and i don't even know how you would split it up to designate it but i know basically you use ultralight rods and then you use the newer wave of uh, technology on the bfs reels if you want to go ultralight if you're going regular bass area you can actually get away with the newer style stuff as long as those spools haven't been so uh shallowed up that they can only hold so much say 10 pound test because almost none of your guys that if you're out a regular bass fisherman or definitely tournament fisherman you're not going to want to throw anything less than 10 pound braid so if there's a spool that just won't really hold enough 10 pound braid to make it worthwhile there those are going to be out for those guys but like the crotto bfs the zephyr the lingle you know i don't know if you could sneak enough you know 12 or 14 pound braid on those but there's a lot of, you know, BFS reels that you can stick enough braid or six or eight pound line if they're really wanting to go, you know, towards lines, shy fish kind of deal. But the chameleon spool, definitely for the zillion I have, the uh, air reels are pretty much out of that. They're pretty much just ultralight only. They're kind of that special purpose. Now, I did take the gecko pigeon and it definitely holds a lot of 10 pound. It, and it actually, it looks better, like once, and I think I've got just a hair too much, like 160 feet. I think I need to go to 140 and then try it there. I think I have, I, I have, I have basically too much line that I'll never even use, even with it being 10 pound. 
Because if I get on a fish, I'm usually fishing in my little boat or with Matt or somebody, we could chase down the fish, no problem. So anyway, guys, I'm out of here for sure this time. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned. More coming. Make sure and comment below, which reel do you guys like better out of the ones you just saw?